I think for all our Manchester United fans watching around the world, the worst thing about this was it was probably predictable, wasn't it? That, that just gonna, sense. I thought you were going to say, go and make a cup of tea. And yeah, well, go and make a cup of tea. Go and do that. Go and do, go and do whatever you want to do. <laughs> We've started here because you want to talk about how when you saw the lineups, it sort of dictated the nature of the game you yeah. felt that we were about to watch. Well, when Man United lined up against Tottenham and they played three at the back and it was reactive from Oli, he had to try something because the same back four conceded four against Leicester. The same back four conceded five against Liverpool. So don't blame him for going three at the back. Nuno couldn't figure out where um, the, the positions on the pitch that would be more effective. He couldn't figure out that his full-backs were most important. I would imagine beforehand or after, Pep would have been saying to himself and his coaching staff, please, Man United, please, please yeah. play three at the back. Play three at the back, Because yeah. you've got Carl Walker on the right-hand side, who can handle the ball. Mm. And the man you want on the ball, with no pressure whatsoever, is Jao Cancelo. One of the best fullbacks in world football. You give him time and space, that left side for Man City, they kept exposing Man United, Dion, for fun. It, it, was, it was so obvious to see as well, because wan not quite sure. Do I twist, do I not twist? Shaw's a very good footballer, but he's not sure either. Three at the back... I'm so not you're saying by playing, playing three, three at the back, at the back you, you could get you, them, his full-backs high up the pitch just leave and pin the wind back in. just big spaces. Pep yeah. Guardiola knows the game. Just, yeah. There's huge spaces in, in, on either side. But it's entry-level stuff. If you watch the Champions League midweek, it's entry-level stuff from Oli, and you look at what Man City done in the Champions League midweek, this guy had three assists yeah. in the Champions League. So your analysis team, if Ollie's busy on a, on a match night and he's scouting and he's watching teams, he's watching different formations, he's trying to get a bigger knowledge of the game, your analysis team have got to come away and say to Ollie, yeah. you cannot leave yeah. Cancelo the free yeah. man. If you're going to leave someone a free man, it might be, let's just say it was Carl Walker yeah. or Rodri in midfield and you allow Diaz and Stones on the ball and you say, right, they're no danger from... The last one he you starts, want he starts, he starts most things. Is him. He starts yeah. most things. And you're, guy, you're saying he's left free, just, just so we're, everyone's clear, you're saying he's left Three because of the direct result of them playing three at the back, Manchester Yes, because, United. because Wan Bissaka's, I mean, I'll show you better on the yeah. iPad, but Wan Bissaka's uh, position now and his style in this formation now is a right wing back. Yes. So the amount of work Wan Bissaka's got to do from box to box, that's normally where the wing back's work's done. It's normally from the 18 yard box to 18 yard box. But the amount of work he's got to do with players in front of him, like Fernandez, Greenwood, mm. Ronaldo, that don't help him. That don't, that don't double up and help so him, right. the yeah. analysis will bear fruit when I show so you... Let's do this. Well, That's it, the talking, it, it, let's it do is. the showing. Absolutely. <laughs> and the thing about it is, Juan Bissaka is a right-back. Yes. He's just a right-back. He's just a right-back that should be just there to defend. He's not very good at getting forward. His quality going forward isn't great. Leave him to defend, that's why they bought him. Yeah. He's very good at that, He's and by and large. And when, I show you this, this, the, when I show you this, this passage of play, it's not a wan Bissaka problem as in he's a bad player. It's just have a little watch of how indecisive, because he's got Cancelo and he's got Phil Foden on his right-hand side. So he knows there's two blue shirts on his mm. peripheral. Watch, and I'll call it, and I'll say it loosely, the lack of movement from wan Bissaka. He's thinking, right, I'll close Cancelo yes. down. Right, that's what I've got to do. Ooh. Right? The distances are too big. Shall I go... Shall I stand still? Well, then he's had a look at Foden, Foden. hasn't he? He doesn't, he doesn't know where to stick or twist, it, does he? Now this is, this, is, this is amazing for Guardiola because, as I said, you've got João Cancelo on the ball in time. And... With space. He, he's, 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 he's done nothing. <laughs> he's not quite sure he's what to do. He's almost shrugged his shoulders, hasn't he? The only thing and the right thing to do is so you just come and stay here because that's a danger. Yeah. The danger's there. He's closest to your goal. He's the one yeah. that could score. Yeah. He's not a danger. And he does neither, really. No. And the hardest thing for Wan-Bissaka, they've not really had time on the training ground to work on this. You know, you speak to any, any professional that goes through the work and goes through the man hours on a training ground to go from a four to a five, that's, that's hard work, Mark. That's, mm. that's hours, isn't it, Dion, on the training ground? Mm, it is. That's it, staying behind for hours is, in it, defensive shape. And we, we've pulled out Wan-Bissaka here, but you've got two, two central defenders there doing nothing. They're marking nobody, so they should talk to him. They should say, get yourself in there. I'll and they, and you come across. I'll yeah. come across, he'll come across. Yeah. 
at the moment they're leaving him to make all the decisions and everybody's picking on Wan Bissaka. And just to uh, uh, sort of to reiterate what you were saying about how much work you need to do on the training ground, I went to the Champions League game in the week yeah. where they started with five because of course it had worked so well at Tottenham and then there was an injury so they went to, to Varane so they went to a four yeah. before yeah. half time. So they so they literally going within match, let alone match to match, what are we playing Changing, at the yeah, back? We have no idea. Yeah. But yeah. now you've got Gundogan on the ball for Man City, yeah. who's a brilliant Great technician. Easy for Gundogan to go, do you know what, there's a little ball there. Yeah. But no, he goes Isn't into that? there. Now, yeah. people might say that's a brilliant ball. I promise you, Mark, that is as routine as you yeah. like for a professional mm. footballer to play a 15, 20-yard pass, Dion, into space but, for Foden. But for Foden, we know he's left-footed, he's going down the left wing, he's got nobody marking him, and he's got all this time. He's got all this time. Pick a pass. Yeah. Pick somebody out. And De Gea. Great block, great save. De Gea in the end. Got lucky. Got lucky, Man United. But look, again, I mean, I could, I could have showed you so many clips of the space oh. and the overload. And the whole time you're expecting Lindelof uh, in the middle of Bailly, 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 one of them to come over. Help, help, help. the fullback. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two on one. I don't know how yeah. many times uh, yeah. Wan Bissaka was two on one against two Man City players. Let's get this right. Yeah. One can actually, one can hold the ball and draw him in. Yeah. Uh, or if he stays there, he'd do it himself. Yeah. Dion, you look at that clip there, and from a Man United point of view, how many red shirts are actually affecting the ball? <laughs> None of them. There's so many. There's no, so, there's no so, one's tight. There's so many um, Man United players doing nothing and saying nothing. Even more worse, saying they're nothing. saying nothing. And wan is thinking, I don't know what to do here. I feel sorry for him. I don't know what to do here. And this is normally where he's good. You get him as, a, as an orthodox right-back. He's a very good tackler of the ball. He is. You wouldn't want to try and play against him in your 1v1 duels. Now, I'll highlight, you know, this is the goal coming up, the Bayer own goal. And you've got a couple of Man United players who are going to close Cancelo down. <laughs> But is there any chance of Bruno Fernandes putting a sprint on yeah. here? Bruno <laughs> Fernandes is, is jogging is towards Cancelo. Cancelo thinks, what, you're not going to close me down? I'll take it in the space and I'll whip it in. Look, look. It's poor. It be there. I mean, once upon a time, particularly when you boys were playing, sh shutting off a cross was paramount, wasn't it? That's all you do, whether yeah. you're a full-back or the not. Mallet, you're the nearest one there. If you there. find yourself in that position, yeah. you stop the ball Just from before the you show that again, was, was Bailly ba technically ba there? It's, yeah, it's bad technique. Just bad he's technique because he's not even close, Mark. He's, got, he's gone to volley and it's not even hit his foot. No. Shin, it's hit top of the shin, bottom technique. of the knee. It's, it's poor technique. But look at João Cancelo again. Room. You're saying to one of the best full-backs in world football, we're going to give you time and space on the, on the ball. This is, this is easy for Cancelo putting a cross in. The defender's awful. The communication between Luke Shaw, I mean, look at, look at Guardiola, he knows just before half time, that's the game done. Yeah. Communication between Shaw and Maguire Dion is I think, so bad. I, I think the, I don't, I don't know because if I'm, a, if I'm a captain of that side, I am, I'm literally going down so many players' throats. Stop yeah. the cross going in, squeeze him, say yeah. something, lead. I don't yeah. care if you've got the armband or not. Yeah. And Maguire being one of the send-offs, shuffle over, get over Do to Ken Salah. You know, yeah. Show some organisation, yeah. some Start, that, responsibility. That, that starts from the manager, the way he sets his team up. And I think what Oli's done is he's gone simplistic and thought, we played three against Tottenham and it worked. Let's do the same against Man City. Yeah, but you have to you've look at the opposition. Look, you look at the opposition. Exactly. You've got to. You've got to know where their threat will come from. Manchester United were so poor going forward. This is quite a, a shocking stat amongst many others for Manchester United fans. The fewest touches in the opposition box for a home team this season in the league <laughs> out of any club. Well, this is a derby. This is, a, this you is know, Manchester one of the United being Manchester the City. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't. Even catch Don's breath. got a frown on looking <laughs> at that. I, 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 can't, I can't catch my breath since no. stats were formed. Yeah, you know, you can go I mean, back as long as you like. That is terrible, it's, isn't it? But the wor I think the worst thing for Man United fans, they knew this result was coming. Yes, that's it's what a, I said. It's, at a, it's top. a movie you've seen before. Yeah, they got walloped against Leicester, got walloped against Liverpool. They go away and beat Tottenham, which we all thought was happening because Tottenham are in a bad place. Then this game, you go in, they're going to get beat. Yeah. Now they've got it on in a couple of weeks' time where they've got Watford. That's not going to be easy, but you might fancy them to beat them. Then you go Villarreal and then you go Chelsea. So you fast forward a few weeks, we're going to be sat in the same boat. I mean, international break, as we said at the mm. top, is, is, is dangerous for managers. And we'll talk about Daniel Farker and Dean Smith. But it looks like he is going to survive for now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You go to the game at Stamford Bridge. Look at those. Chelsea, Arsenal, Palace. Those are three tough games. Palace are playing really well. Arsenal are getting better. Chelsea are Chelsea. But when you look at the bigger picture, Mark, if you're, if you're <clears> at boardroom <throat> level at Man United and you can smell how the season's going and you can smell how your team's playing... And Antonio Conte is a free man last week. 
And you must know at board, you must, you must think, we're not going to beat Man City this weekend. Why wouldn't we ask the question to Conte? Why wouldn't we sound him out before then Daniel Levy was smart and got the job done and get him in at Spurs? It's, it, I, it, I, I don't know. They're, they're just not going to make a change, Dion. No. It's just not going to happen. They're, they're, I think they've made a decision on Oli and but what keeping is the, with him. On, on what basis? Exactly, that's the thing. On, on the performances, or should I say, on the way that he's organised his team, I don't know at the moment, because I don't know the way Man United play. I don't even know if that was a three or a five or what. It was all over the place. And the fans, I think the fans' biggest bugbear is... I don't know what we're trying to do. Yes. That is what the fans are thinking. I've been there many times. They're going, I don't know what we're doing, what we're playing, Dion. Can you show him the formation on the screen when I'm working what there for the media? What are we trying to do? What are we trying to do? Who's playing where? They don't know what's going on. And that's so making them incredibly frustrated. Their plan is, is Gad De Gea make some brilliant saves and mm. keep us in the yeah. pitch, score us the winner. Yeah. Yeah. There's no plan in between that. No. No. And it meant that Manchester City just won very comfortably. Easily. Barely broke a sweat second half.